Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome. I'm really excited to be here today. So tell me, let's talk a little, let's start out with who you are. Let's talk about your journey in your professional Mm -hmm. career. Will you tell me a little bit about that path. Okay. So I'm in the military and I joined the military fresh out of high school when I was 18 years old. And um, I've been in the military now for 25 years. So it's been a very rich career. I started off enlisted and I was on the enlisted side of the house for 15 years. And then I commissioned as an officer and I've been doing that for 10 years. So I've had the opportunity to um, you know, go through the ranks and it's a, it's a different experience, you know, at different uh, pay grades in the military. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing intelligence the entire time. So throughout my um, career, um, and it's given me the opportunity to live all over the world, meet, you know, lots of different people. So it's been very enjoyable. And being a woman in the military. So, and I think for me, it's my only Thing, you know, it's my only perspective. Yeah. So it's been great for me being a woman in the military. Um, I know that's not everyone's story, mm-hmm. but um, for me, it's been it's been really really good. Do you think because you were a woman, do you think it pushed you a little bit more? Do you think how do you think it played into your journey? Because I think that it is interesting, and there are probably a lot of women that wouldn't share your sentiment, right? Yes. So it's, a, it's fantastic that yours has been. A wonderful experience. Yes. Maybe it could be the way that you looked at it. Right. But I believe that I was pushed in, you know, being a woman in the military because there's that sense of, I can do this. I, you know, awesome. I'm here. Um, and I even remember my earliest time in the military um, going through boot camp and wanting to like hold my weight, you know, hold my own. So, you know, there's some things. I'm not physically capable of doing, but if I'm physically capable of doing it, I'm going to get it done, you know? Mm -hmm. But I do think that a part of that is um, being a woman and showing up from that space of, I can do this. But I don't have a false sense of women being able to do everything that a man can do. You know, we're very different creatures. And I love the fact that I am a woman with a lot of the attributes that we as women possess. Mm -hmm. Um, But there are many things that, you know, we are quite capable of doing. Um, And if if for me as a person who chooses this path, I feel like I have to fully show up and be present and able to do that. Um, Because I have met women throughout my career that um, always want help with things that are... um, perceived to be harder, you know, for women to do. And um, I don't appreciate that type of um, mentality because we're capable of many things, you know, and it's like, yes, if you can't do it, that's one thing, but just not wanting to do it or wanting somebody to do it for you, Mm -hmm. um, that's a totally different thing. It's, it's such an empowering listening to you talk about it. Mm -hmm. You, it sounds like have really owned who you are and your strengths and what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. And it's a really, it's a really amazing way to hear you talk about it. Even just that we have so many strengths. So maybe it's not this, but, oh, I'm really strong at this. Right. And so maybe give us some of, have you had maybe one or two experiences in your career Mm -hmm. where you really kind of owned who you were and the power that you have just as a person, yes, a woman, but as a person. Do you have an example or two in that? Hmm. That's a really good question. I can't think of a good example right offhand. Think about it. Okay. You might come up with one. Think of it. That's a really good question. So how about this? Let's talk about, do you remember when you hit six figures and what that felt like? 
Yes. So I actually had to go back and look because I (laughs) watch the podcast, you know, watch the webcast and knew that that was going to be a question. Um, So for us in the military, we're really centered around promotions Uh and pay grades, right? Uh And the other thing is we don't all make the same amount at a particular pay grade because of how long we've been in the military. Okay. So for me, for example, I'm an 04 that's been in the military for more than 25 years. So I'm going to make more money than someone that made 04, you know, in 18 years, okay. right? Uh-huh. So I had to go back and look at the record. So we're always looking at the next pay grade. Like, uh-huh. oh, I put on this pay grade, I put on this pay grade in this time frame. Uh-huh. But when I a couple of pay grades ago is when I went over six figures. But I didn't realize it at the time that, oh, this is the pay grade where I'm going to go over six figures. Uh Um, It was just the joy and the excitement of having reached that pay grade um, because I didn't intend to make the military a career and the officer path also wasn't in my plan. So when I joined the military, I didn't even aspire to make six figures, Mm -hmm. you know, so I thought it was really interesting that even I had to go back and look at, well, when did I start to make six figures? Um, just because of the way our pay structure is, it's mm-hmm. it's not as um, obvious. Um, and it sounds like you had different benchmarks that you were looking at to kind of evaluate success for you. Right, yeah. yes, yes. And you know, I joke that like, I feel like I'm on bonus time, right? Because I had a, even on the enlisted side, I was very successful. I, you know, reached um, the pay grade of chief petty officer, which is a, it's a high accomplishment for us. And then beyond that, you know, I went into, you know, the officer ranks. So all of my officer rank time, I just feel like this is all bonus because many people, you know, have a full enlisted career and, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a big achievement to have reached the um, rank that I reached on the enlisted side. Um, So yeah, it's it's very interesting. So you're right, it's very much, driven by that next pay grade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Will you talk about that? So what made you choose to make the military a career path? So it was very late in my career that I decided it was going to be my career for real. So I always uh, joke, especially like people who've known me for a long time, it's hilarious that I've been in the military for 25 years. So I originally... Well, because you look like you're 25 years old. And so. that. Yeah. <laughs> But I originally joined for college benefits. So my plan was, I'm going to go into the Navy. I'm going to stay in for four years. I'm going to get those college benefits, and I'm going to go to college. That was my plan. (laughs) But I enjoyed seeing the world. So my first Mm -hmm. tour, I went to Japan, and I was stationed on a ship. We travel all over um, Southeast Asia. Um, and it was just a big eye opener. I'm from Houston, Texas, and my travel growing up was like to Louisiana where we had family. Mm-hmm. We came to Florida um, to go to Disneyland or Disney World. I always get confused which one is here. Um, but that was the extent of you know my travel. I did do like a senior cruise when I was um, in high school to the Caribbean, but you know that was it. So joining the military and being able to like really see the world. Um, that was just a wonderful perk. So once I went to Japan and had the experience of traveling to all of these amazing countries in a three-year period, um, I had an opportunity to go to England next. So I was like, that's worth sticking around, you know, beyond the four years, I'll go to Europe. So I went to England and I met my husband, my first tour in the Navy. So we got married um, after, you know, like we had been in about four years. And so we say Europe, that was our um, like honeymoon duty station. <laughs> but we had the opportunity to travel throughout Europe. We were stationed on shore duty, meaning we weren't traveling um, on a ship, but we were able to you know, take um, weekend vacations and things like that. Um, and so it was, for me, the decision was always about what was next. You know, what is uh, the next four years? Um, and a lot of people in the military will say, well, as long as you're having a good time, it's worth sticking around, you know? Um, and so really that was how I initially stayed around was having the opportunity to go and travel to amazing places. And um, when I was around year 12 in the military, that's when I finally decided, okay, 
I think I'm going to um, do this thing and um, and stay for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, so now I'm only looking eight years ahead, right? Right. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do eight more years, and I'm definitely gonna retire at 20. <laughs> so now that I'm like still sticking around and I'll retire the end of next they year. They just got you. They got me, but it's been a good career. It's been really good. <laughs> so, um, so you brought up so many interesting things for me. So we have a lot of podcast listeners that are aspiring to six figures. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend the military path? So is that, is that something, do you ever speak with younger women and say, this has been phenomenal for me and Here's how to navigate it. Is that yeah. something you recommend? So I do recommend the military. I think that in the military, we get a lot of tools. Um, there are so many things that I feel like I have been able to learn and grow in um, that are uh, maybe not as readily accessible um, on the civilian side. So yeah. I do feel like there are you know benefits that I've had mm -hmm. having been in the military. But the six-figure path, takes longer, mm -hmm. especially the way I did it. So I do tell people, go get an education first. You know, if you want to join the military, wonderful, um, go to college mm -hmm. and then come in on the officer side. Mm -hmm. uh, because for me, um, joining the officer side 15 years in, I did have a lot of wonderful, um, you know, like I don't want to, I wouldn't want to change my path because I feel like it's made me who I am today mm -hmm. and I'm a better officer because of those 15 years that I had in the enlisted ranks. Mm -hmm. um, but it also, if the goal is to make six figures, you need to be strategic about how you're going to do that. And then when I look at some civilian paths where people are making six figures, you know, their first five years or, you know, really quickly in their careers. And then on the military side, you know, that took me a really long time. But it wasn't an initial. I didn't know it as a goal, right. you know, when I started. But um, but yeah, so I would say if six figures is your goal, you really have to think about how long it's going to take you to hit those wickets, which is easy to figure out if you look at the, you know, the charts, um, you know, planning out. And I think it's so interesting because I give women counsel to this point all the time. Yeah. Non, non-military, right? If, if that's your goal, then mm -hmm. you need to have it really lined out what you're going to do to achieve that. Right. So <laughs> right. if that's your goal, and right. if that isn't, that's absolutely okay. But if mm -hmm. that's your goal, know how to get there. Right. Yeah. There are tons of options if right. that's the goal, yeah. you know, that is uh, not the military. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think it sounds, it sounds so amazing to me when you were talking about what you've learned and the experiences that you've had in the military. Mm -hmm. I think world travel is one of those things that really, really opens our eyes yeah. to, to life, yes. to what we're blessed with. Yes, to, yeah. I agree. Um, because I think that when you're only, when you only have one perspective, it's hard for you to even appreciate where you are. Mm -hmm. But when you go to another country and you're able to see girls aren't able to go to school because their families can't afford to send them. Mm -hmm. You have a different appreciation for education that in our country many people get for free, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I totally agree. Um, and even, you know, I have, well, my children are not that young anymore, but they had the opportunity when they were younger to live overseas. And I feel like that's just an education you can't just get mm -hmm. in school mm -hmm. that it's an experience that you need to, you know, be able to have. Yeah. I've said this on a couple of podcasts, I think, but I tell my daughters all the time, you won the birth lottery yes. being born in this country. Yes. And I think sometimes they don't appreciate it, mm -hmm. but my older daughter, when we went to Africa, I think really started to realize, yeah. wow, it's not just given. Education isn't just given right. to women. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Such yeah. a powerful lesson for your yeah. children. It is. And when for us, when we're just given things, it's something we expect. You know, I feel like in America, there are just things that we, since they've always been available to us, we just expect it. Mm -hmm. And so the appreciation isn't always there. Yeah, until you see the contrast. Right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I hear you're going to be retiring. I am. I'm going to be retiring next year and I'm super excited. So I've been preparing my next phase. And so I've already started um, health coaching. 
So I think I was explaining to you earlier that I planned to retire sooner. Mm -hmm. So I got my um, health coach certification in 2017 after getting my master's degree in counseling and coaching. Um, and so now I've been able to, you know, continue to cultivate and grow that business as a side business while I continue to serve in the military. So when I do retire, I um, have a, you know, business to walk right into instead mm -hmm. of starting the build at that point. So what prompted you into health coaching? What was it that brought, that took you that direction? So for me, I have a strong um, desire to help people like be their best selves, right? So and that has been part of even in the military, I'm always trying to help people see the tools that they can use, um, opportunities that are available to them, um, just you know, different um, advantages that they may not be aware of, but I know because I've been around a little bit longer. So that aspect of me has always been there. And then um, I'm fascinated with the way the mind works and how um, like the subconscious and um, how like we're able to form habits by habituating things, right? And so initially I didn't realize how all these things connected. So mentorship, the way, you know, the brain forms um, and nutrition, you know, just being fascinated with the way we're able to change our experience, you know, we're able to change our, you know, the way our bodies are operating, mm -hmm. the way we're feeling um, by, you know, the things that we're doing, how we're eating and exercise and mindset and all of these different things. So I was fascinated separately with these different things and didn't really realize how with health coaching, I'm able to marry all of those things together. Um, but I didn't know that early on, um, like when I was even working on my master's degree, um, in counseling and coaching, it was more of the piece of helping people develop in themselves what they um, what they want, you know, becoming their best selves. Mm -hmm. um, and then the health piece came along a little bit later as I learned more. That's wonderful. Okay, so mm -hmm. one of the things that I ask all of my guests is podcast or book, and are there ones that you recommend? Okay, so a recent podcast that I just started listening to is the Courtney Sanders podcast, and it's a, a business podcast, and I'm really, really enjoying it. And so I have to give you a book as well because I love books. Um, <laughs> so one of my favorite books that I recommend to people is The Five Love Languages because understanding um, yourself and the way you enjoy being loved and also understanding how other people um, mm -hmm receive love is huge. It um, changes the dynamic of our relationships. But I have to give you one more. So my favorite mindset book mm -hmm. is Hardcore. It's by David Goggins. It's called Can't Hurt Me. So you have to brace yourself for the language. He's a former Navy SEAL, yes. but the book is amazing. I agree with you on that. <laughs> I've recommended that one to a lot of people. I love that book. Yeah. It's like but when it, I need a kick in the butt, well, yeah. I'm going to listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so what have I not asked you that you think? Hmm. Give us some of your wisdom of all of these amazing okay. years <laughs> that you do not show. <laughs> so I um, would like to talk about uh, attributes and qualities. So I think that um, for me, one of my best attribute is having a positive disposition. So I feel like um, I may not always know all the answers, but I have grit, I work hard, and people enjoy working with people that are going to give their best, you know, that are going to be excellent. Um, so there's, I think it's Maya Angelou, the quote, and I might say it wrong, but it's something like people uh, may forget what you say, people may forget what you do, but they remember how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I try to walk through life. You know, it's not just about um, the things that you do, but really how are you making people feel in your interactions um, with them. Um, so I think that it, it, it speaks volumes where, um, because for me, and I think even being female in the military, not always feeling like I have all the information or I'm 
um, fit the mold or whatever, but being that person that someone knows that they can rely on, that you may not have the answer, but you're going to get the answer, mm -hmm. and that you're someone who um, improves the environment of uh, where you are, um, that's uh, important to me. Yeah. You can tell just in the way you started out speaking about mm. your situation and what you've done that mm. you look at things from a positive light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the saying about uh, life isn't what happens to you, but how you respond to it, mm -hmm. I uh, believe that yeah. very much. <laughs> and that's powerful for the people that you're modeling it to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such an amazing Thank you. You're, you're really welcome. incredible. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for doing this. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.